Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga. Beautiful, right? All those blooms. But uh, today it's a care collab, so we do not going to talk about the fells. Um, but a plant we are going to talk about lives fairly near to the uh, the fells. You can see her now in the right hand corner. And I'm going to walk to her, towards her because she has beautiful, beautiful blooms. I still have it uh, classed as a, a Brachyphola binosa, but probably has another name. And if, if it does, I will have it in the screen. But just look at that lip. Beautiful. And those green sepals and petals are so, so beautiful. Very intense. I was really, this is the first time that it blooms for me, but I really was yeah, overwhelmed basically by the, by the colors and the, sh the, sh uh, the size of the bloom. It's a fairly big bloom, but so, so beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic. So it lives here in my greenhouse, as you can see in the corner of that shelf. And it receives quite some daylight. I have the daylight coming from above and also from the sides. So I have quite a lot of uh, daylight but I do not have a direct um, LED lamp above it so it does get um, the, the hours of light that we have currently and I have some, day, uh, some lights on at night that, that will lighten up the greenhouse but those are not very intense and I wouldn't class them as actually grow, growing uh, bulbs for exception when I have them as you can see in the back there a the LED it's very close to the, to the orchid so then it's helping, then they are really enjoying it and they're really growing uh, towards the light as well. But uh, I don't have that here in the greenhouse because I, maybe one day, but I think it's going to be okay. I have uh, some lights there, some artificial light. So, and yeah, so far so good because this one is uh, blooming and they need some light. I think they are, uh, yeah, intermediate towards high light uh, liking orchids. They really uh, enjoy the light. And they will uh, surprise you eventually with the blooms and I was absolutely surprised so so beautiful so yeah let's uh, let's uh, grab this one and have a look uh, at it inside of the green uh, in the orchid room I'm sorry so we can have a look in the pot and um, yeah as well this one is growing in self a self watering setup We are now uh, in the orchid room and before I continue this uh, care collab I would like to mention that uh, the other participants for this care collab are Karen's Orchids and Ninja Orchids. So we are uh, the three of us going to share this care collab uh, with, for you guys today and I really hope you uh, will enjoy all of them. I uh, will definitely have a look of course at the other videos and at this point I have no idea if this uh, mine is uh, the only one blooming currently but um, we will uh, we'll see and find out. So uh, that's said and done. Like I said, we're now in, uh, in the orchid room. And there I have um, my uh, stuff to do my measurements because that's a big part uh, of this, uh, the care that I give to my orchids. Um, before I forget, in summer I give them, uh, all my orchids, uh, most of the times, uh, the same amount of feed. Uh, so I do that with this one as well and that is in uh, like I said in spring summer longer days warmer weather around 100 to 150 parts per million and uh, If I don't forget I will put a link up so we can check the fertilizers and, and natural hormones that I'd like to use for my uh, for my uh, plants But that's the amount of uh, parts per million for summer and in winter. It's uh, 50 to 80 something like that so, and uh, because I don't flush, I uh, have to measure my uh, reservoir every three uh, months. And uh, to demonstrate that, uh, I will do it now. So what I do is I'm going to take out uh, the orchids from the pot, so we can also have a look at our roots, the root system. And there she goes. So, and there are some roots, I hope you can see them. A few of them are, uh, are brown, but some of them are still uh, alive. But maybe some of them are not alive anymore. This one doesn't have a very big root system, but we have some roots 
in the back as well. On the other hand, it's a fairly big pot, so I think there are more roots inside uh, the pot as well than on the edges uh, of the pot. But it see, it's doing fine. And um, when I transferred her, she had basically no roots at all. So I think uh, she's doing fairly well. Um, and as you can see, we have beautiful roots on, on the top of the pot as well. Some are branching, so I think she is uh, doing uh, better. But here, in the back of the plant, I did lose quite some canes when I did uh, uh, transfer this one into uh, self-watering. And I like to believe that it was on a mount or something and it didn't have much roots to begin with. So I basically had to uh, yeah, regrow it, start, start it going again. But so far so good. And it's now blooming, so she is doing well. And we have a, a boss here in, uh, in this, on this bulb as well. And I have this for, uh, for over a year now. It's from uh, the 3rd of July 2020. So I think uh, we are doing uh, okay. But yeah, what I do every three months for every orchid that I grow in cell watering is uh, check the reservoir and the parts per million, like I said, because I don't flush. And after five or six months, when you transfer a orchid into cell watering without uh, flushing, the uh, reservoir, the pH starts to uh, drop instead of rise. So therefore I uh, need to, to do those checkups and I keep them here and on my notes. We will have a look at my notes uh, when we, uh, after the uh, measurements. So let's start with the uh, pH. Let's check this. Do I have a pH meter for that? And I will put it in. Stir it a little bit. And this needs, needs a little bit of time to uh, adjust. So, while it is adjusting, it's reading of uh, measuring the pH, I uh, will check the parts per million with this meter. And let me pause it. No, wrong button. <laughs> let me put it on hold. That, yeah, we have a parts per million of 117. So that's beautiful. I like to keep them uh, under the 200 parts per million of a reservoir. So if this was, for example, uh, let's say above 200, 210, I would clean the pot and flush it and give it a clean RO water. Only pH down, the, pH, uh, the RO water, but nothing more. So just to, uh, to get that uh, reading uh, at, a, at a better level. And most of the times, if I uh, if I have it happen, and I only put in uh, our oil water, like I said, most of the times the next day I'm going to check it again, and most of the times it's around 80, maybe 100, but way more uh, diluted. So that's uh, that's better. Um, and the pH is beautiful. It's uh, 6.74, as you can see. Hopefully, I'm a little bit. I do have a little bit of glare there, but so um, that is what I do. Like I said, every three months, this one would be uh, good to go, so I can put it back in the pot and make a little bit of room, so I can grab my notes and check what kind of reading I had the last time that I did check it and see if something has changed. And it did. We had a. Uh, Parts per million, let me see. This was the last time, it was on the 16th of October. I had a reading of 145 parts per million. So this one started to eat, probably because it was making buds. We had now a reading of 117. And I had a pH of 6.7. And when I measured it the last time in October, I had a reading of 7.3. So there you see, it will uh, drop and um, I will uh, check this uh, around uh, January again, but so far so good. So I like to uh, let it let the pH go down over over a, a period of three months, and then I will hype it up again around seven seven point five, and it will go down. And that's basically the system, the cycle that I created with this this meta method. And um, yeah, for me, it's really working really well. 
and it may sound that uh, it, it's a lot of work because I have around 300 at least uh, orchids that are growing in cell watering but the checking of all the reservoirs is most of the times I do them in groups this one is in the group of the Cattleya types and uh, even though it's now called a, a Brachio Cattleya binosa, I, I didn't know that uh, when I had a tag but I did, uh, did watch it, I did check it anyhow this one is a uh, uh, in a group of the Cattleyas and uh, like I said most of the time it's around uh, one hour and I have checked them all so um, you get a sort of system in it and uh, so it will be go quicker and it's only one hour and then I have three months that I only have to water it and enjoy the plant enjoy the blooms so for me uh, with my lifestyle with my uh, Day, uh, day job etc it's really working well and that is how I can keep uh, so, so many orchids I have around 330 in total now I think so uh, yeah this system uh, suits me very well and I like to grow them as we saw in, in pumice sometimes I have a little bit of lacquer in it I use Cintiq but for this one I, uh, I use the, uh, the pumice with a top layer of uh, pebbles so that's, uh, that's basically it, that uh, is uh, the care that I uh, give it and apparently uh, she is enjoying it, we have more candy, we have two directions of growth and it's not a very difficult orchid to, to keep in my, uh, in my opinion and uh, I think not that hard to bloom but yeah this is the first time that it bloomed, it took about a year but once again it, it had basically nothing when we started growing this in this method so it had uh, to grow a root system, canes and eventually also buds. So yeah, uh, one year for an orchid is not, not that long. So I think it's, it's doing uh, really well. And once again, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I really, really like the blooms. So we are back in the greenhouse again. And the noise you may hear is uh, coming from the heater. This one is currently uh, doing its job and that brings me uh, at the temperatures that I keep this while well, I keep all my orchids uh, around 18 degrees at night and so I have the heaters going when needed and during the day at least it's uh, around 20 degrees but in summer it will uh, go up to uh, 30 and I believe this one uh, really enjoys it it really likes the higher temperatures so um, therefore I need to keep it at least at night at around 18 degrees and uh, that's also because I have this growing in water and the roots do not like to, uh, to get too cold so uh, I like to uh, keep it around 18, uh, 18 degrees at night and this should be uh, I think it should be fragrant I'm not completely sure but um, being at a Brasovola type most of them are uh, fragrant and especially at night but um, yeah, May yesterday evening well it, my lights were out uh, already it was really in the dark I checked it I might pick up a very very hint of a citric type of fragrance but it was very very yeah how do you call it it was it was hardly noticeable so I'm not completely sure if it was this orchid but um, perhaps the other uh, ladies uh, do know if this one is fragrant but mine is currently not so um, but I, I, I think it may have a uh, night fragrance because of the uh, parents in there so yeah this is, this is uh, basically the care that I give it and once again it's beautiful I keep looking at those blooms they are so so beautiful look at all those dots there wonderful so you guys uh, thank you for watching and as usual if you have any questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below I will get to them as soon as I can and for now um, once again thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye